all four seasons of Love is Blind to figure out, once and for all, whether you need a spark for a relationship to work. Spark, noun. The feeling when you meet someone and the vibes are just vibing. Not only is there a strong physical and sexual attraction, there is also a sense of undeniable personality chemistry. Now before we jump in, let's talk about the Love is Blind format and why it provides a near perfect case study for answering this question. Obviously when the couples first meet in the pods, they don't know if they have a spark because a lot of that is just attraction and obviously they can't see each other. Duh. So instead they connect over all the more important things like shared values, their life goals, basically their non-physical friendship. It's all very romantic and very simple until they meet in person. And at that point, either they thrive or they fall off a mother cliff. Now let's dive in. What better way to kick off a Love is Blind case study than with Zach and Irene, who had the biggest negative spark I think I've ever seen on television. Girl meets boy, girl is disgusted by boy. Look like something out of like a cartoon. Boy and girl don't remotely get along. It's been absolutely horrible sleeping in this bed with you. And they're broken up by the end of their luxury all expense pay vacation. Similar story with Shayna and Kyle, who didn't even last for two nights in Mexico, if I recall correctly. Pretty straightforward. This is where things get interesting. The mid connection is when it's not a categorical no, they're not disgusted by each other and they still have a lot in common, but there definitely isn't like a spark in the conventional sense of the word. I think there's chemistry. Now there are so many examples of this one, but let's just start with one of the most notorious, Shake and Deep D. Now setting aside the fact that Shake is a nasty, horrible, disgusting excuse for a man, Deep D is a gorgeous, intelligent goddess among mortals, the fact of their relationship was that there was no physical Attraction. The physical part of the relationship, like, we should be like on top of each other nonstop, right? It's not instinctual to me right now. So they spent the entire season wondering if their relationship could survive based on being best friends. Oh. Spoiler alert, it could not, and it also couldn't survive Shake being a piece of <laughs> And Shake and Deepy are far from the only couple who ran into the issue of one not being attracted to the other. I mean, we have Bartice and Nancy. No matter what I do, like, I will never be your type. Looks fing matter. <laughs> We have Mark and Jessica. It's not someone I would typically go for, you know, based on looks. We have whatever the f their names were. And it never, ever works. Attraction matters. Sorry. Now, in the mid-connection category, there are also cases where it's not that obvious. This was my polite way of saying the following couples at least want to f*** each other, but the overall chemistry still isn't quite there. This is where I would put Micah and Paul from this past season. Or for that matter, any other couple whose connection was so mid that they started flirting with other people within the first few days of the relationship. Shout out to Cole's weird fixation with Colleen, Jared and Mel's little flirtation in season two, and yes, Kwame's side of the Kwame and Mika poolside fiasco. Now, obviously at this point, Kwame and Chelsea are still happily married, but we'll see. In my opinion, when there's deep, undeniable chemistry, <laughs> <laughs> the whole drop your person immediately to go flirt with someone else thing just doesn't happen. Now, when people haven't done their inner work and they come into the experiment with deep insecurities, unresolved past relationship traumas, or simply an unhealthy addiction to fuck boys, fuck girls, or non-binary people, you get the toxic spark. Basically, the toxic spark happens when you meet someone who you know is gonna trigger your anxious attachment style, give you an exciting chase, or even just someone who's hot as but has no other redeeming qualities, and you confuse your fight or flight response, or even just pure physical attraction, for a spark. Who better to illustrate this than the poster child of toxicity? This girl right here. Now Jackie had a real man in front of her. Sensitive, vulnerable, ready to commit. But gaslighting, manipulative, toxic masculinity loving Jackie didn't feel a spark for that guy. Instead, she felt a spark for this guy. Who came to her drunk off his ass while she was still engaged to another man talking about, I wanna be with you. Wait, if, if, if that's it, so why are, you, why, why, are you, why, why are we always talking to you? You never was like super deep with me, super open. It's beyond the the lights. It's beyond the cameras. I don't even, I don't give a fuck about none of that shit. More toxic and or unhealthy spark examples include Nick and Danielle. I don't, I, I'm, I'm not getting to address anything right now. Not even me. Nothing. Oof. Shane and Natalie. Last night, Shane and I got into a fight. I asked Shane, do you think you like maybe had a little bit too much to drink? 
and he just got really, really angry at me. And season one's toxic royalty, Giannina and Damien. You know how you tell me this is the best sex of your life? Have you noticed that I don't return the compliment? Now that was good television. What all of these couples showed us is that if one or both parties are stuck in unhealthy relationship patterns or behaviors, the spark thing is <laughs> because frankly, your spark meter is broken and before you can even think about dating, you need to get that shit fixed. This may be accomplished by subscribing to The Fairy Thought Mother, going to therapy, journaling, reading a self-help book, or all of the above. Dive into the holy grail of sparks. Let's go back to why Love is Blind is such a good case study for answering the spark question. The people who say having a spark doesn't matter at all to the success of a relationship usually say that the more important thing is your overall friendship and your values and yada yada yada. But everyone on this show already had that deeper stuff as a foundation. And yet, for the vast majority of them, that obviously wasn't enough. But for some couples, things did work out. In the case of Love is Blind all-timers, Lauren and Cameron and Tiffany and Brett, yes, they had aligned core values. They had beautiful, deep friendships formed in the pods. And most importantly, both parties came in emotionally healed and truly ready for a committed relationship. But on top of all of that, they had one more thing, clear, undeniable chemistry. In other words, the fucking spark. And this applies to pretty much every other live couple who's still happily married. Zach and Bliss, Alexa and Brennan, even Amber and Barnett. In addition to being non-toxic, mostly, value aligned and ready to commit, all of these couples met in person and had immediate chemistry and physical attraction. The fairy thought mother, I mean, can't the spark grow over time? It definitely can, and that's where Love is Blind kind of differs from real life. On Love is Blind, they already got to know the deeper side of one another, and for some of the couples, I'm sure that's part of why the spark was so instantaneous when they met. And so, in the real world, I think there are cases where you meet and there isn't necessarily like a crazy over-the-top spark, although there has to be at least a little chemistry, let's be real. But once you get to know each other deeply, a bigger spark can, of course, grow over time. But if you get to know someone and you find out you're spiritually aligned and you find out that you have this beautiful friendship with them and you still don't feel a strong chemistry and physical attraction to them, in other words, a spark, it is my firm opinion that it's simply not gonna work because you're always gonna wonder what it would have been like to be with someone that you did have that genuine spark with, whether it took a little time to grow or whether it happened on that very first meeting. Have you ever wondered how big of a role your gut feeling or your intuition should play in your dating life? Well, I made a whole video on how important your intuition can be and how you can learn to better follow it. Check it out and don't forget to hit subscribe. Bye, buddies!